So today we have the opportunity to show you a very interesting demo. We have two phones here, two products from HTC, uh, model 820. Um, they are basically identical designs, uh, same features, same size, same uh, display, same camera, uh, same memory. <clears throat> the one on the left is the MediaTek 6752 octa-core based dual SIM product. And the one on the right is a Qualcomm octa-core Snapdragon 600 series with a single SIM. Otherwise the designs are pretty much the same. Let's power them up. And so the way we would like to try to benchmark them, uh, one of the simplest ways is to run a benchmark software. Um, we chose for this case an Anto2 benchmark. Um, it's one of the more mainstream sort of standard uh, industry benchmarking uh, tools and uh, it's quite exhaustive in terms of what it tests and you'll see as, as, it, as it moves through the testing stages that it focuses on basically all the aspects of what a user would do with a phone when using it aggressively uh, or if used by a power user. Okay, so let's fire up the Antutu benchmark tool and see what we can, what kind of information we can gather. So two uh, Antutu, uh, I've just updated both of them to version 571, so they're identical. Uh, first thing to look at, if you go into the information, you should have all the information regarding to the device that uh, is under test. In this case, as you can see, it says HTC Desire A20. Um, there are both running version 444, 32-bit version of an Android. Uh, the one on the left has MediaTek 6752. The one on the right has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 615, um, chipset number MSM8939. Same screen resolution. Um, basically identical models. So, without further ado, let's start the uh, testing. Test, test. You could see that the um, device on the left is pulling ahead in terms of being closer to the completion of the benchmark, but that's not the most important part. The important part is the summary benchmark result that N22 should show us at the end. So um, the MediaTek based device has completed. Um, this is the result and this is how it's ranking against the other products on the market Meizu, Samsung Galaxy Note 4, OnePlus One and um, HTC Desire A20 with the uh, score of 43,690 if we go back to the uh, launch screen we should get the test result and that's the official um, result from the N22 benchmark version 571. The device on the left, we'll rank it later. The device on the left is 43,690. That's MediaTek Octa-Core 6752. And the device on the right is the uh, Snapdragon 615. Um, there are a couple other in interesting things I would like to point out to you. Going back to the information screen. So, uh, again, these are the information on the devices. What I think is interesting to also check out is the information about the CPU, because we're basically benchmarking CPUs here. So, again, two, let me line them up for you. MediaTek, Qualcomm, both are 64 bit, both are eight cores. One um, is capable of running up to 1.7 megahertz. The other one is up to 1.6. So if you were just to attribute this to the clock speed, the difference in performance should be 10-15% or so. But you notice 28,000 versus 43,000. Um, 
that's more than 50% increase, right? In fact, we can calculate the number, uh, but uh, it's a significant increase in performance. But besides performance, what does it? What, how about the uh, um, battery consumption, right? There is a misconception that uh, the more cores you have, the more power you draw, uh, which could be true if all eight cores were running all the time uh, um, at once. But that's not necessarily how the device operates when uh, you are not actively using the application. So this is something I wanted to show you. We're going to go into cores. Uh, let's find where that is. Camera, display, CPU, core information. And we will do the same thing here. Core information. Now here's something to note. So these are eight cores and this um, application allows us to see in real time what each of the cores is doing. Now the device is not doing much. It's running Android. Um, it's in the um, Antutu 2 application but the Antutu 2 application isn't running. So you would think that the device currently would try to uh, manage power efficiently and, and minimize <coughs> the uh, uh, number of active cores that are running at the same time. If you look at the left that's exactly what you're seeing. Core 0 running about 15%, 20% consumption. Overall CPU is about 5% which is what you would expect. Um, core 0 is running actively at the peak performance, uh, basically the maximum, uh, maximum speed. Um, the uh, However, the cores um, that you see, um, all, the, uh, all the rest of the cores are sleeping, right? So they're not actively running. Um, so out of eight cores on board, uh, one or two are running uh, at, at various speeds uh, on and off. Um, now, if you look on the right side, this is the uh, Qualcomm based device. It's quite interesting because here you see four cores running at between 800 and 1100 megahertz. And then others are also running at about 800 megahertz. So at any given time, despite the very low CPU load of about 3%, most of the cores are functioning. Now you can draw your own conclusion which of the device, left or right, would be consuming more battery power. So in summary, a very interesting comparison. Two identical devices designed by the same manufacturer, same manufacturer, um, octa-core devices, similar clock speeds within 15% uh, from each other, um, yet uh, very, you know, all are octa-cores, 64-bit, uh, same Android version, same benchmarking software. One is about 50% higher performance the, than the other. And the key to that performance is in the design of the uh, chipset and the design of the system.